Welcome everyone to today's event. Today we're gonna to learn about digital assessment for math and how you can use Edelastic to improve your math instruction. So thanks for joining us today. The first thing that I wanna do is just ask you to make sure that your chat is set to everyone. We wanna make sure that if you wanna chime in, you're able to chime in and we can have a conversation on the side. You can share your expertise or your experience. Um, let's test out that chat and if everyone could, please go ahead and write your name. What type of math you teach and the location that you're tuning in from. Okay, so go ahead and put that in the chat. I'll give everyone a moment to fill that in so we can get to know everyone who's in the room today. Okay, we have, I don't know how to pronounce it, Taya, who teaches algebra, South Carolina, Stacy from New Jersey, teaching seventh grade. Katie teaches in Virginia, secondary math instructional coach, Arizona. Chat's moving really fast, trying to keep up. Um, Anne Marie, math coach, algebra, New Jersey. New Jersey, seventh grade. 7th to ninth grade in Spain, kindergarten in Washington, D.C. Okay, so it looks like we have a wide variety of people online from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade who are teaching all different subjects in math, and we hope that you'll be able to take something away from today's presentation that will help you use digital assessment with your students. Throughout today's presentation, um, if you have any questions that come up, we want this to be casual and open and, and very discussion-based, so go ahead and type any questions in the chat and we will address them as soon as we can. So uh, I just want to quickly introduce our featured speakers today. So we have Rhonda Post, who's a high school math teacher in Blount County, Tennessee, who will be sharing her experiences with digital assessment, and Jacob Felger, who's a technology integration coach um, in Gas City, Indiana. So we're very excited to have them on board and for them to share your experiences. And I think you're going to learn a lot from what they have to share with you today. So, the first thing that I wanted to share is that um, when we were pulling together this webinar, I wanted to get an idea of what some of the biggest attractions to the digital assessment were and what teachers are finding most useful about it. Because on the ground, um, if you're teaching with digital assessment, you know best um, how it can help you. So I went ahead and pulled um, teachers on our, on our Facebook group, and these are some of the things that they came up with. So I made this world, word cloud to kind of pull out some of the trends that we were seeing. So I kind of like this top area here because it says creating rigorous assessments. All those words ended up together somehow. Uh, and so that's something that uh, teachers were finding they could do. They could adjust the rigor of their, their questions that they were asking, make it harder or easier for students. Um, it allows teachers to ask the questions they want um, and address misconceptions. I think that's something that's huge is that by using the digital assessment, you get that immediate feedback and you can figure out why students weren't grasping a concept that you thought you might have, have reached them with. And then also um, something that wasn't represented in this word cloud that kept on coming up was preparing students for state testing. I see state right here, that actually um, probably represents that idea because a lot of teachers, whether you're teaching SBAC, PARC, um, AIR, this type of online testing mimics the state tests and it allows you to use TEIs and other things that students will see online so they can make sure, you can make sure that your students are entering that test day with confidence. Um, I'm going to take a moment right now. I do want to ask everyone, what is your experience with digital assessment with using Edge Elastic? Um, can you let me know if you're brand new to it, if you have created an assessment yet, if you've created and assigned an assessment yet, and if you are using it all the time and just looking for tips. So maybe just let us know your, your level of comfort with digital assessment and then let us know uh, what you're excited about learning today on today's webinar. Let's see, we have some brand new teachers. We have, Lindsay has used Edge Elastic, new to Edge Elastic, but using other online assessment tools. Some people have used it a few times. Weekly, Weekly great. Okay, great, this is great to see. So we have a lot of, 
Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it should be okay if you clean host. Use not individually. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. So uh, digital assessment is great for standards-based grading and then also um, creating personalized learning. Let's see. Use Edge Elastic but not, have not created one. Okay, great. So it looks like we have people with all sorts of experiences. If you are entirely new to digital assessment, I encourage you to check out the Edge Elastic 101 webinar on our website. We had a couple webinars uh, for brand new users uh, in September, and that'll be a really good overview. There are a lot of really great questions asked. That's on our YouTube channel, so make sure you go check that out. And so hopefully we can uh, answer anyone's math questions. And if you are one of those people who are using Agilastic every week, please make sure to chime in with your tips and tricks in the, in the chat today. Um, here are some of the more specific insights from math teachers. So we had people saying that it, uh, Provides data, making it possible to differentiate based on standards mastery, allowing students to monitor their own progress towards standard mastery. Um, there's a lot of benefit to the real-time data. So I use it for real-time data so I can address misconceptions before a test. I use digital assessment because the results are instant. Angela said that. And then Jamie mentioned common assessments, technology has items, rigor, quick, efficient data, collection analysis. I'm not going to read through all of these, but just wanted to give you an idea of, of how certain teachers are using it. And here are a few more. So that some, the expression builder is helpful. Uh, I teach fifth grade math and create and resolve expressions. That's important. Um, it's also great as a cyclical review of material after every assessment. So continuous checks, whether it's exit tickets or just formative assessment purposes. A lot of what we've heard is that before you're cutting and pasting assessments, the work piles up, but then when you switch to assessments, digital assessment, it kind of clears your desk. You're able to keep everything in one spot. You don't have to squint your eyes to try to understand what the student is saying because it's typed up, it's online. And uh, hopefully it can give you more time, give you your time back so you can focus on instruction and not spend too much time grading. In Edge Elastic, um, you'll notice that there are a number of technology enhanced items. Uh, here are the basic question types. So there's multiple choice, multiple selection, text drop down, essay type, text entry, true or false. And then for math teachers, such as everyone on this webinar who's watching, you're going to find some more in depth questions. The fraction editor helps you test to see how students understand fractions. There's expression evaluators, numeric, and those help you get at more specific math questions using. Um, math phrases, and then there's graphing, graph placements. You can do pictographs, graph plotters, line plot. We looked at our database and some of the most common Agilastic math TEIs that teachers are using are multiple choice, advanced numeric, expression evaluator, text entry, and multiple selection. I think this is interesting because you'll see that multiple choice, text entry, and multiple selection are not math specific, which I think is just a good reminder. If you're one of those people who are brand new to Agilastic, no need to dive right into the more um, challenging, more specific technology enhanced items. You can just uh, start simple. And once you master um, simple online testing, then you can kind of dive deeper into those more specific questions. And then you'll end up getting um, great results for data. And I'm not going to go too far into this right now, but this is what um, your instant feedback could look like if you're giving digital assessments. And then you can also pull from an online database of questions from groups like Engage and Y, um, Ohio Air Release Tests. And that's great because you can recycle these easily. It saves you time. And you can pull from sources that, that are trustable. So I'm going to pass it off right now to Jacob Felger. And I'll let you introduce yourself. If you're, yep, OK, great. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Jacob Felger. I have been a math teacher for about 13 years. And for the past year or so, uh, I have been doing math coaching, um, technology integration coaching specific to math and science. So um, our school district is one to one with MacBooks now, which is um, pretty awesome. Uh, we can do a lot with those. And one of the ways that we're using those is uh, digital assessment and uh, Edge Elastic is a big part of that. So um, please ask questions uh, as I'm going because I 
wasn't sure exactly how to tailor um, what I wanted to talk about today. Um, and I, I see that from the chat, there's a lot of different people with a lot of different needs out there and just want to make sure that we're, um, we're hitting those needs as we move on. Next. Okay, so um, I'd like to talk a little bit about how Edge Elastic can be a, a powerful tool for formative assessment. Um, I want to show you how I use Edge Elastic and some of the features that it has and then how it drives my instruction. Next. Okay, so um, first off, I am an Indiana teacher, and every teacher from Indiana, when they hear the word I step, they start quivering. Um, so I know, I, I don't think I saw anyone else from Indiana in the chat, but uh, I'm sure that you have a state assessment. Uh, and next. So our state assessment is called the I step. And that's a summative assessment. So that's something that, um, you know, our evaluation as a teacher is based on. Um, unfortunately, those summative assessments, they do not yield the data that we need to really make informed decisions uh, for our day-to-day -day teaching. So Edge Elastic is a great tool for formative assessment, uh, and that allows you to um, really dig into what your students need as far as responding to specific skills um, that they need to, uh, to learn. Next. So I'm putting Edge Elastic there in the center. Um, another thing is paper and pencil isn't really cutting it anymore. Um, you know, as we're trying to prepare for the summative assessments, a lot of those are now digital. And we need a formative tool that's also digital like Edge Elastic. Um, and really, who wants to grade anymore? Edge Elastic can take care of that stuff for you too. Um, and so it's gonna give you immediate data that you can use to drive your next day's um, agenda for what to teach. Next. Okay, um, and that little green arrow that you just saw there, if you know, go back real quick. Um, if you're using formative assessments like Edge Elastic, I think what you're going to find, what I've found in my class, is that the summative assessment kind of takes care of itself. You're going to see student growth, you're going to see um, great test scores. Okay, uh, next. So there is a little caveat here, uh, paper and pencil versus Edge Elastic. When I introduced the idea of Edge Elastic to my math teachers, there was some resistance uh, because they really wanted to be able to uh, see the student work. And so I understood that being a math teacher, I wanna be able to see what students are thinking. Uh, but I also loved how Edge Elastic created things for me and I wanted to have the best of both worlds. Next. So now you see paper and pencil with Edge Elastic. So what eventually convinced them that Edge Elastic was a valuable tool that they should really look into was the idea that they can have both at the same time. So uh, I just encourage them to have a sheet of paper in front of every student with a pencil. Uh, they see the question on the computer screen, they work out the question on their paper, and then they can mark their answer on the computer. And really that's exactly the same thing that they're gonna be expected to do on our state summative assessment, um, and they're just practicing that throughout the whole year. So in the meantime, you know, um, they're, they're learning skills for testing. You get immediate data on how they're doing since they're entering their answers into Edge Elastic. The students get to see how they're doing immediately, but then you can collect that paper and you can go back and you can look at exactly what the students were thinking. You can adjust their scores in Edge Elastic after the fact. You can add partial credit, uh, or you can just do that in your gradebook program later on. Um, but that is what sold our math department on uh, Edge Elastic being a great tool. Next. And next. And you can go ahead and scroll down through all these. So we've got easy to create, easy to grade. Um, the question types are great. Um, so there's immediate scoring, actionable data, and we can track the progress by standard. Next. Okay, so how do you actually do this stuff, right? Um, right now I'm gonna focus on how they're easy to create, easy to grade, and then the different question types. Next. So uh, I've posted a short link at the top that if you would like to uh, visit now or you can jot it down and visit later. Uh, and this is a sample Edge Elastic assessment 
that highlights some of the different question types that are my favorites. So I've circled some of those here that uh, I use all the time, but I'm gonna show you this in action. So I'm gonna share my screen. I think, okay, and is everyone able to see my screen? Ileana, can you see that? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, great. And, uh, and Leslie just posted the link in the chat, so if you want to access that link now, you can just find it in the chat and go ahead. Perfect. Um, so this is the assessment that's gonna get pulled up and uh, you will need to be logged in uh, to see it, but once you log in, it should pull it right up. And this is like a drag and drop kind of question, so like that. You've got ordering kinds of questions. Um, another comment from some of my math teachers was, how can I really assess at a deeper level when all I have to work with is A, B, C, D? Well, with Edge Elastic, you have so many other options. You almost have to start thinking creatively. Um, and I hope that this assessment here that I shared with you can give you some ideas about how you can ask questions in different ways than you might thought of before. So for this one, um, solving an equation. You know, normally we would just have students write out their work and then type in the number into the computer, hit A, B, C, or D. Um, but this one's an ordering kind of question. So what would you do first? What would you do second? What would you do third? And some of them is kind of obvious, but um, just you, you almost have to think creatively about it to um, just look at things in a different way and to get a deeper uh, understanding. This one here is uh, pictures. You can embed pictures, you can embed videos into Edge Elastic. This is a numeric kind of question, and I love this for math. You're gonna love this too, so get this. If I type in, uh, and I don't remember what the answer is, but let's just say that it's uh, 24.1. Um, I can type in 24.10, oh, 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 oh. I can do 24 and 1 tenth. And I don't have to sit there and type in all of these different options for the number because Edge Elastic will automatically recognize all of these answers as numerically equivalent. Um, anything that's numerically equivalent would be okay. Um, and, and unless there's a, a checkbox for check to see if it's a simplified expression, um, if you use the expression evaluator. So um, there are lots of flexible options. Um, yeah. That's the numeric. This is another way that you might ask to solve an equation. What would be the first step to solve this equation? This one here has a little video help that I uh, put together and I don't even remember what this looks like. You can look at that later, how about that? Um, so then they solve the uh, equation and they have to type in their answer as y equals, which is something that our state assessment requires um, the students to answer with a y equals, which is maybe kind of weird, but it does. Uh, so this one is one of the fraction questions, shade and six fifths. This is another way that you might ask to solve an equation, solve this equation on paper and dry erase board, or I, I have dry erase boards in my classroom. Um, so students show their work on that sometimes uh, if it's not a quiz or a test. Look at the answer choices given, checkbox, all of the choices, which are steps that you would take to find the solution to the equation. So they're out of order. They have to write down their steps and then they're selecting the ones that, the steps that go along with um, what they would have to do in order to solve that equation. So I thought that was an interesting um, way to show their response. This is a um, range plotter type question. And let's see if we subtract five from both sides, we get Q is less than or equal to negative two, so it'd be something like this. So that's kind of neat. Uh, this is a drag and drop to create their own scatter plot. And I saw in the chat someone had mentioned that you need help creating the different question types. I'll show you in a second. Um, there are little help videos, which I use all the time when I'm going to create new questions because I forget there's little nuances to creating each question. Um, this one, they have to type in, uh, I forget what the answer is, but they're typing in letters to answer each Pythagorean theorem question. This is a simple drop down. 
Okay, they're typing in numerical responses. Again, you can embed uh, pictures. This I just screenshotted from a state assessment. You can combine multiple types of questions together as a multi-part question. Drag and drop for rational and irrational. Uh, you can have essay kind of questions. Students can design their own equations and expressions and put them in. Uh, vocabulary, so that's an interesting idea for using Edgelastic. Uh, I forget what the word is, but it does require them to spell it correctly. I think they can make a one letter mistake. Uh, the expression evaluator is really neat. Uh, so say the expression is 2x plus 6. They, uh, Edge Elastic will also accept uh, x or 2 times x plus 3 would be equivalent or really anything else that would be equivalent to that expression. Again, unless you hit the checkbox that says required to be simplified, in which case uh, 2 times the quantity x plus 3 would not be acceptable. They'd have to have 2x plus 6. So that's kind of cool. This is a newer tool where they can draw their answer. Um, so create a story problem, which you can solve using the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so that's kind of neat. And then this is another, so they can create a dot plot using the dot plot creation tool. Okay, so I don't think I got any of those right. Oh, I got a couple of them right. All right, <laughs> this is what the students will see when they're done with an assessment. They'll see their overall score, and then they'll see how they did on the different questions. The ones in yellow are partially correct, green is correct, and then the gray ones they didn't try at all. You get much more detail on your end as a teacher, but the students can also step through and see exactly which ones or how they did and what the correct answer should have been. Okay, and just briefly before I get back to the um, slides. The snap quiz is neat. Check out the introductory YouTube um, videos to help with that. I just wanted to show you real quick. When you're authoring you new have, questions. Just for this. a second. Yes. Sorry, can you um, stop sharing your screen and then reshare it? Because for some reason we're seeing it turn white. Um, about every three seconds. And it just flashes white and then goes back. Oh, has it been doing that the whole time? It's been doing it for a while. Oh, right. I'm sure sorry. how to fix it. But okay. maybe if you just reshare, that'll help. I'm not sure. We're hoping it will. <laughs> it could be something with the bandwidth. Um, not really sure. Okay. You could also try turning off your video and maybe that would help. Okay. Okay, how about that? No, oh, it's still flashing. Okay, um, okay. let's just move forward. Yeah, we'll I, just wanted to, I just wanted to show these little question marks here. We'll show you how, um, little brief videos on how to create each type of question. So um, okay. that's really all I wanted to share. So I guess back to um, the slides. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, and just as Jacob was just saying, um, if you click on those question marks, a video tutorial pops up so you can immediately learn the basics of the question and how you can apply it in your assessment. Okay, the traditional assessment lets you see a database of thousands of questions. Um, you'll want to learn about the filtering and pay attention to that. Um, the snap quiz is a newer feature. You can import a PDF and then add little widgets to build your assessment. Um, so the one that I shared with you is not a snap quiz. Um, they are really easy to make. Uh, and then once you assign your assessment, you can watch what the, uh, how the results roll in. So next. So once you've created that assessment, you, the students get to see their scores immediately, and then you get to see their scores what, uh, roll in. And this is great information for you. I like um, watching the data roll in, um, but then what if the students also got to see that data come in at the same time, like as they're completing the assessment? So uh, I don't do this for a quiz or a test, but I will use Edge Elastic as a quote unquote worksheet. So students, it's just, it's a formative assessment, but it's really just practice. And so what I'll do is display the tiles, like you see in the uh, bottom right hand corner on my projector or my TV. And that way students can see how they're doing as they go. Next. 
So this is what something might look like. And this is actually from my class uh, from last year, just before our uh, state summative assessment, the I-STEP. They did great. Yeah, you see a lot of green there mm -hmm. uh, because they really were interested in going back and fixing and fixing and fixing. And they'd, they'd realize, oh, I made a little mistake here or there. And um, so I called it stress-free because it really was. They had every opportunity to go back and fix their questions and they learned a ton through the process of, oh, I should have. And a lot of it was just how to take a digital assessment. Like I should have labeled this in a little bit different way, or um, I need to make sure to follow the directions about rounding. And so it gave us an opportunity to have a lot of conversations uh, just about taking the test in general, but then also about the content. Um, you see not everybody got as far as uh, all the way through and that was okay as well. You know, I've got lots of different levels in my classes and you do too. Um, so the time that I had to give them, that's how far they got and there's still a lot of green even for those students that didn't get uh, super far. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear for anyone who is not that familiar with Edgelastic, those gray squares mean that the student has not yet answered the question. Right. And I did zoom out on the tiles. So in your browser, I think it's command minus allows you to see more tiles at once. And you'll need to do that if you want to get your whole class on your projector or on your TV. Okay. And next. So this is a zoom in of uh, the, the class summary on a question by question basis. And so my question for you is, if you were to see this in your class, how would you interpret this? What do you see? So I, I wouldn't mind if you have a chat response for a particular question, something that sticks out to you as important or something that you need to address. And just as an introduction for people who haven't seen this bar graph at all, uh, of course, green is correct, red is incorrect, gray is not answered yet, the blue line is the time spent on average for that question. And comparing the green and the blue and the red uh, can often give you really interesting insights. So I see Stacy says that you need to reteach question one and question three. What's the difference between question one and question three though? There's a really big difference between them. Right, yeah, they thought that they knew question three, right? The time spent on that one is very low, uh, whereas they spent a whole lot of time on question one and still missed it. Mm -hmm. So the way that you address those two questions and the time that you spend mm -hmm. on each question might be very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about question two? Easy, they all got it. The time spent was very low. Okay, some great responses there in the in the chat. Okay, very cool. Next. So responding to data. Um, yeah, like it says there, Edge Elastic isn't just for the big assessments or the end of unit. Use it as a worksheet. Uh, use it as a formative assessment. Um, think about maybe putting the student responses on your TV. And then you might have to ask some hard questions, like was this assessment actually fair? Um, if you compare the two views on the left and the right, one of them is definitely more fair than the other. Um, the one on the right, uh, the, and these are both from my classes, by the way, these are actual assessments. But if you look at, say, question uh, seven on the right-hand side, anytime a student is going to be missing more or around 50%, you know, you got a question, is that a, a content issue or is that... Uh, a testing issue. Uh, question 10, question 12, 15, you know, those have some partially correct responses. 16 might be an issue. And then look at question 20, definitely. Um, there's something going on there. So I might have to give them back some points. Okay, next. Okay, and uh, reporting in Edge Elastic, there's a ton of reports that you can uh, use, especially if you have a premium account, but even in the free account, uh, and it's standard-based reporting. So it, since every question is tied to a standard, you can track across multiple assessments throughout the entire year 
how a student is doing on a particular standard. So as you're getting ready for those summative assessments, um, all the data from all these formatives that you've given throughout the year is combined in final reports. Next. And all that is for free. Mm -hmm. Next. <laughs> Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is don't worry so much about the summative. It doesn't give you data anyway. Use something like Edge Elastic to uh, assess students throughout the year, tie it to specific skills, respond to the data, and intervene as necessary. Next. Just real quick, the premium account does give you some really cool stuff too, like uh, calculators. Next. There's some more advanced options, um, like you can shuffle the answer choices, shuffle the questions, um, stuff like that is pretty useful. Next. And then these are all the different reports that you can access in the premium uh, version. Next. And that's all I have. Thank you. That was a really awesome overview um, and dive into the different types of interpreting the data and then also those question types. So thank you, Jacob. Um, if anyone has any questions that they haven't already asked, we'll have time at the end to ask those questions and explore a bit more. Uh, for now, I'm going to hand it off to Rhonda, who, who I'll let you introduce yourself again and take it away from here. All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, great. Um, I'm Rhonda Post, and I'm from Blount County in Tennessee. And uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit today about kind of my own personal journey um, in teaching this year and how I'm using Edge Elastic to support my, uh, my goals. So next. So this year I have a teaching goal of um, helping students be more um, able to self-assess. Next. Um, so I teach ninth graders and we know that when they come in, there's a big change from middle school to high school and um, I'm looking for ways to support them um, so that they can be more, uh, they can advocate for themselves more, they can uh, self assess their learning so that they can be more, um, be more uh, successful in high school and, of course, in their future workplace as well. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. All right, so um, what I decided to do is um, to have students start self-evaluating almost daily. And um, the, I give them, at the beginning, beginning of a chapter, I give them all of the learning targets for, um, for the chapter. And even before we've even studied it, they can go through and say, well, I know kind of something about that. I remember doing that in a previous class or something like that. So they might go through and uh, evaluate themselves on all of the learning targets, where they're starting out, what they think about it. And then as we go through the chapter, uh, we'll revisit it and they can think about their learning and how they're growing. Do I now understand these words? Do I now understand what, what they're asking me to do? And, um, but sometimes students run into a, thing, um, a problem where they think they know, but really there's, they're missing some understanding somewhere. So that's where I've been using Edge Elastic to help my students um, figure that part of piece of the puzzle out. Next slide. So those were an example of some learning goals. And then um, after the first exposure to the lesson, I gave them uh, this quick three question lesson check. Uh, very quick for me to grade and, um, and turn around to them. In fact, I got it back to them in the same class period, pretty much just kind of grading when I had some, when I had a moment. So here on the first question, you can see one student um, gave a very detailed answer um, to uh, figuring out the solutions to a linear quadratic system. And, uh, and told me everything that we had talked about in the lesson. 
And then this other student gave me uh, an answer that's not even really answering the question. So at this point, when I'm grading it, I can give them immediate feedback and say, hey, that's, you know, I love the way that you used the vocabulary or I, you know, you did a fantastic job. Or I can tell them, let's develop this answer a little more because, you know, we're not quite there yet. So I can give them personal feedback even while they're um, turning it in. You know, the, the beginning students start turning it in and I can go ahead and grade it and get it back to them right away. Next slide. Here's just another uh, sample, a very kind of entry level um, uh, type of problem that they would do for this uh, learning goal. Uh, next slide. And then uh, probably a more challenging problem where they had to solve it algebraically. So, um, so after they took this quick, um, it probably took them about 10 minutes to do. Next slide. I, you know, for the teacher, I get back this result, which tells me that um, the students really did get the gist of the lesson as far as what does it mean to be, you know, have solutions to a linear quadratic system? However, um, and as expected, the more challenging piece of it, solving algebraically, still needs to be worked on. So, um, so that came back to me just within minutes, and then, um, then I turned it over to my students to look at their own results, and they could go back to their um, their teaching target or their learning targets and uh, decide, okay, where am I really um, falling? You know, do I really have mastery of this learning target or do I need to go back and uh, get more? Next slide. So um, the outcomes that I observed were pretty fantastic. So we've all experienced students who say, well, I just don't understand. I don't know what's going on. And, um, but instead of that, next, um, students, I found that students were aware of the learning targets. They were able to, um, to realize their questions that, that they had now. So go ahead, go ahead and scroll through those, okay? Um, they were able to ask specific focus questions. So instead of saying, I don't understand what's going on, they can say, um, I don't understand how you solve that linear quadratic system by um, substitution. Or they were more keyed in on what they didn't know and what information they needed. So, um, it, it allowed them to ask questions and be a self ad advocate for their own learning. So, and um, I also knew, noticed that they're actually using the vocabulary because they had to figure out, okay, which of these do I know and, and do I not know? So um, I'm having quite a bit of good success with using Edge Elastic for students to really see what they uh, kind of know and don't know through each lesson. And it just takes a few minutes at the end of a lesson to kind of check back in and uh, really understand uh, and get this great data on, uh, on how my students understand the lesson. Thank you. That was a really great overview um, about the whole personalized learning experience and how we can give students um, ownership of their learning. So, um, thank you. Are there any questions in the chat so far? Not yet. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, we are turning it over to questions now. So, if you have any questions um, for us here at Edge Elastic or for Rhonda about what she just talked about or for Jason, um, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Jacob. I don't know why I said that. Um, go ahead and you can type them in the chat or in the Q&A section. We'll open up open up the floor for that. I think there are some good questions that are coming through. So if we want to answer any of them verbally, we can go ahead and do that as well. Oops, there's my pointer. <clears throat> 
and we have about 15 minutes, so we're right on time. This never happens in webinars. <laughs> Um, so we have a, several questions about how to use redirect. Okay, let me turn this video on again. Um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could share them or Jenny could. Um, how to do it. Sure. So let's see. So in order to use redirect, um, and I know that one of the teachers in the audience Nerissa uses that a lot with her classes for high school math. Um, it's a great tool. Let's see. I'm going to start my video so you guys can see me. Um, okay, I'm going to log into Edelastic over here and then I'll pull it up. So I don't, Redirect is a really great tool for giving a student a second chance if you want them to give a particular assessment another try. It's also good if your student is absent or if um, you want them to take some more time to answer their questions. The option is available um, in this, the assessment dashboard. So let me pull that up for everyone to see. All right. Let me share my screen too. Um, let me share. Just share the desktop. Oh, here we go. Okay, sharing screen. Okay, so I'm logging in. Oops. And let's see if I can find a good class to demonstrate this with. All right, let's go to classes. And let's see, let's go here to fourth period. I have students here. And we'll go here to my unit one practice test. So it looks like there were three students that were absent. Maybe there are some students that struggled. Let's look at this information. And we'll find those absent students and give them a second chance to retake this test. So it looks like I was absent, <laughs> Ileana, <laughs> and then uh, Sarah and Mike. So let's select the students we want to give that second chance. And we'll just select the redirect tool. And we'll go ahead and if we want to change the due date, we can, I can just close it manually. Um, and this is going to be assigned to all those three. And if I want to set any advanced configurations, I can, but we'll just click redirect, keep it simple. And then they're all set to go. go back to so I'll go back to the responses. And now it says that they have not started it. So I know that they have the opportunity to go back in and answer those questions. And this little icon right here, can you see my mouse? Okay. That means that the assessment has been redirected. So you can know um, just by looking who has that redirect option. And Jenny just posted an article for redirect in the chat. So if you want some more information, you can go ahead and check that out. And here's a, a look at that live dashboard. So students are completing the questions in the assessment, you will see this change. And some teachers will go around the room with their iPad or with some other device, and they know how students are doing. They can just look directly at um, the results as they come in and maybe even go over to a student who they see is struggling and say, hey, you might want to try that again. I'll also show you, um, so if I wanted to go into a question, let's see, let's go to this one. This looks like an not an autograded. We have some questions in the Q&A. Okay, Leslie's handling them. This is where I see the student responses. So if, if people were answering this, this is an essay question. I can manually go in and say, okay, they answered the question. If they did a good job, I'll give them one point. If I want to add a comment, I'll say, great answer. 
I can tell you worked hard on this. And save that. And the student will be able to answer that when they log back in. Um, if they didn't answer it, I'll say, hey, um, can you please tell me why you weren't able to answer this question? Okay, is there anything anyone else wants to see while I'm logged in here? Fix me messages. Yes, so when you assign an assessment, okay, Jacob answered this just now. You can pause the assessment and come back to it tomorrow. Oh, and Jacob and Rana, if you want to unmute yourselves and answer these questions verbally too, feel free. Yeah, so I'll go and show you where the pause button is. So right here is the pause button. I can just pause that. And now no one can go in and change the assessment. If I want to open it again, I can go ahead and open that with the open button. So it's now open and available for students to work on. And then once I'm entirely done with the assessment, I can hit the close button to finish that. Um, Les is going to share a flowchart with everyone in the chat that I'll show you. Uh, basically, if you're having trouble deciding which question type to use, it'll help you make that decision. Oh, okay. And then um, Jacob pointed out that pointed out to me that earlier someone mentioned something about wanting to have an easy way to share assessments. Um, do we have Google Classroom users with us today? Because there's a way that you can um, share an assessment. We do, okay. There's a way that you can share an assessment through Google Classroom really easily. So when you're going to manage your class, okay, great. The integration makes it seamless, which allows you to um, sync all of your classes with Google Classroom. So I could just hit that right here. Or you can sync particular classrooms with Google Classroom. Um, here's the button right up here. You can also um, add students by their Google usernames. If you use Office 365, you can add them by those usernames, or you can just simply add in their first and last name um, to create their account. And when they first log in, all, all they will need is the class code and their username um, to log in. Oh, and you can also um, post an assessment to Google Classroom after you assign it. So let's see, I'm gonna to go to the assessment library and grab an assessment. We'll choose Math Common Core over here. And so um, I'm gonna pull this directly from here. I'll just choose one of the top assessments that I see. The nice thing about the assessment library is that you can filter it by name, tags, or standards. You can find certain grades. You can choose from different collections. So if, you're, if, you, if your school uses um, a certain type of curriculum and you want to share among teachers in your school, you have the ability to do that um, if you don't feel like sharing it publicly. Um, of course, if you share it publicly, that's great. Uh, and then let's see, we'll just take um, this one here. It's kind of a crazy image by NJ Model Curriculum. And we'll assign this. To, oh, can I assign this to Google Classroom? Okay, I just, yeah, I'm trying to, here we go. Okay, second period math, and click assign. And there's Leslie. Oh, here we go, to Google Classroom. So there we go. And then your students will get a notification, I believe, in Google Classroom. Oh, I don't really have Google Classroom <laughs> since I'm not a teacher, but uh, that's what I would do. And then um, they don't even have to log into Edulastic at that point. 
which is great because it reduces the amount of logins for students, the amount of passwords that you have to remember. So thanks for bringing that up, Jacob. Good point. All right, I see another question potentially in Q&A over here. Okay. I think you can download here. Okay. So you can, there's a way um, over here to download your grades into a, a file. Excel file. Oh, so you have to select everyone that you want, and then you click download grades. Oh, but the assessment has to be closed. So once you close the assessment, you can download them and then add them into your grade book, however you need. So that's the answer to Melissa's question. Good question. Amanda says, love connecting Edge Elastic with Google Classroom. Yeah, it's a really great feature. I know a lot of teachers find it really helpful, especially because it just keeps everything in one spot. I'm gonna give a few more moments in case anyone has any quest more questions. Did we answer everyone's questions today? If so, I'm impressed. <laughs> If anyone has any follow-up questions, um, please feel free to send us an email. My email is iliana at edgelastic.com. Uh, or if you have any feedback on today's webinar, we wanna make sure these are as helpful as possible to all of you. Um, let me, hmm? we'll send, yeah, we'll, so we're gonna send you the recording and a follow-up, and we'll also post this webinar on our YouTube channel so you can review it later or share it with your colleagues. Um, before we sign off, I also just want to uh, say again a big thank you to uh, Jacob and to Ron Rhonda for joining us today. I really appreciate the insight that you shared with everyone, and I think it was really helpful and really informative. Um, that's what Marlon said. Lucen, very instructive. Thank you. Um, thank you all to everyone who joined us today, again, um, for all the great questions, and we're here for you if you have any additional questions as well. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I enjoyed sharing. Thanks, Rhonda. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Jacob. And also feel free to connect with us. Uh, please connect with us on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, follow us on Edge Elastic's uh, YouTube channel if you want to continue to get um, great tutorials or videos on how to do different types of things in Edge Elastic. It's a really good source. Thanks again, everyone. Have a good night. We're gonna sign off and Enjoy the rest of your day.